Today, we're testing many AAA games on the new Apple M1 Pro chip. Pause the video now for the specs of my 14-inch MacBook Pro. Our first game to test is chess. Just kidding, it's Troy by Feral Interactive. Recently, Feral updated Troy to a native Apple Silicon application on the App Store. It will soon be native on Steam in the next Troy patch for Steam. I first tested the game at 1080p high and it gets 64.7 FPS on average. I then tried 1440p medium and the game gets a similar frame rate of 69.2. And finally, 4K or 2160p. This is where the CPU would finally start to see its full strength, getting 35.9 FPS. Like this game and many others, I would not advise playing games at 4K resolution on the M1 Pro chip, even if you have a maxed out M1 Pro. Our next game is Baldur's Gate 3. Now, as you all know, I've said it many times, patch 6 isn't supported for M1 chips yet. So to play this game on M1-based Macs, you have to enable patch 5. Still, patch 5 has pretty good performance on M1, as this version is still running under the ARM architecture. It was blazing on M1 Macs last week, and it's still blazing here on M1 Pro. At 1080p Ultra, the game is getting 90 plus FPS. The game is quite playable at 1440p high, with well over 60 frames. 4K on M1 Pro and Baldur's Gate 3 is definitely not advised right now because you could be getting anywhere from 25 to 60 FPS, while on M1 Max you can be getting closer to 60 FPS more often. But hopefully Elvarels and Larian can improve the performance so 4K may be possible in the future, even if you have to lock it at 30 FPS. Here we have Metro Exodus. Unlike M1 Max, Metro Exodus on M1 Pro isn't doing as well. So at 1080p high, the game will be getting 35 to 60 FPS. Unfortunately, there isn't really much difference between 1080p high and 1080p medium. Now, Metro Exodus has been optimized for M1 chips with Molten VK on top of the Metal framework. And this was done by the Apple Metal Engineering team and 4A Games. We saw this at WWDC. Now, the game hasn't been optimized for M1 Pro and M1 Max yet, and I'm hoping in the future that it can be so that we can get a smoother frame rate. Hopefully, uh, at least 1080p high 60 FPS would be awesome. Okay, let's have a look at some Windows games. First of all, Parallels isn't really advised for high-end games. For example, here is GTA 5. Because the Parallels shares a lot of resources with macOS Monterey in terms of your RAM and CPU, it isn't having much resources to work with this game here. So at 1080p normal, the game is getting about 30 to sometimes 40 FPS, and it can get even below that as you initially launch the game. However, in Crossover 21, the game gets double the performance at uh, about 60 plus FPS at 1080p normal. Now, in my opinion, normal graphics for this game looks pretty awful. So if you have an M1 Pro or an M1 Max device, you can put down 1080p high and the game looks much better, but you will be getting sometimes, well, typically lower than 60 FPS between 50 and 60 FPS, but the game looks much, much, much better. Another game that I got working recently under Crossover 21 is Battlefront 2, which I'm really excited about because I love this game. Previously in Crossover 20, the game would not launch with the Origin Launcher, but now it does, and it's up and working. However, the game does have quite a lot of stutter when you initially launch it. So if you play at 1080p high, the game will be getting 40 to 60 FPS, but there is major stutter. I definitely don't suggest playing at high graphics on M1 Pro. 1080p medium is definitely the way to go because you'll be getting closer to and sometimes over 60 FPS and there will be some minor stutter. It's also worth noting that 
multiplayer doesn't work right now. At least from my testing, I couldn't get it to work. And there are also minor graphical artifacts in some scenes and on the player selection menu and whatnot uh, and so forth. So keep that in mind. Sekiro Shadows Die Twice also works fairly well. I mean, it's a lot better than what we saw with the original M1 chip. At 1080p high, the game gets 40 to around 50 FPS, but there is a lot of stutter. So again, like Battlefront 2, I would suggest playing at 900p medium, which will give you again 40 to 50 FPS, but there is significantly less stutter. The game is, well, I would say playable at this state. And my last Windows game to show is Mortal Kombat X. Now, yes, this game is pretty old. It was released back in 2015, but I'm really impressed that this game is able to pull off 1440p max graphics with 60 FPS on average. That is absolutely insane. You can also play at 4K, but your frame rate will be about 30 FPS. I don't suggest this for this type of game. For a fighting game, I strongly suggest at least 60 FPS. The only thing to note here is that the game does have some bad graphical bugs, but it only occurs during cutscenes where parts of the players will be missing. Uh, it is actually kind of humorous though, in a way, but uh, hopefully somehow in the future, Code Weavers can work out how to improve this. Okay, from here on out, we're just going to focus on native uh, macOS games. So here is Dying Light. Now, as I said last week, Dying Light was recently updated from OpenGL to the Metal API back in mid-2021. So it runs much better than before on M1 chips. At 1080p high and medium, the game gets very similar performance, which is typically over 100 FPS. 1440p now and high, the game will be getting 60 plus FPS. And finally at 4K high, the game will be getting about 40 plus FPS. I wouldn't suggest playing this game at 4K just because Dying Light really does need 60 plus FPS to be enjoyable, for me anyway. It's definitely worth noting though that since Techland updated the game from OpenGL to Metal. There have been some graphical artifacts now. I couldn't recreate them, but I have seen them in the past before working on this video, so just keep an eye out for that. 2K recently updated NBA 2K22 as a native app on M1 chips, and it also supports 120 FPS at 1080p ultra high. Unlike the iPhone, iPad, and Apple TV version of this game, you can choose a custom resolution up to 1080p. It's very unfortunate that the game doesn't support a higher resolution, as I strongly believe the game would be able to pull off a similar frame rate at 1440p. Shadow of the Tomb Raider is getting about double the performance of the original M1 chip. Instead of getting 30 FPS at 1080p medium, it is now boosted to 60 FPS. You can also play at 1440p medium and get 37 FPS on average, which isn't bad. Here we have Borderlands 3. Now just like M1 Max and even the original M1 chip, this game performs pretty poorly. So to get this game to be playable, you have to play at 1080p medium for about 30 to sometimes 60 FPS. Now, as I said last week, Gearbox worked on this one in-house. They didn't use Aspire Media. Aspire Media ported Borderlands 2 to Mac and Feral Interactive ported Borderlands 1 to Mac. So this could be a, a reason for why the game isn't very well optimized because perhaps they don't have much experience with optimizing a game for macOS or Metal Framework or Apple Silicon. A lot of you wanted to see Dirt Rally. So Dirt Rally is an interesting one because when you connect an external monitor to this game, you can't choose custom graphics and it locks the 
resolution to 720p. I didn't want to show the game at that state because it can do a lot better than that. So unfortunately I couldn't use my capture card, I had to use QuickTime Player to screen record the game. And here I am running at max resolution, which is at the Ultra preset, and it's getting 54.66 FPS on average. And then I also tried 1600p Ultra, and the game gets 78.97. And then I tried 1200p, which is kind of like 1080p Ultra, and the game gets well over 100 FPS at 114.54. Alien Isolation is one of my favorite games of all time. It still looks like a next-gen experience, despite actually being available on PS3 and PS4 and Xbox One and Xbox 360 and whatnot. It's just a gorgeous game. What's interesting on Apple Silicon based Macs is that when you initially launch the game, SSAO will be enabled and this completely breaks the performance. It's unplayable at literally like below 20 FPS. When you disable this, the game will get double the performance. So here I am playing at 1080p, high and medium, and the game gets very similar performance, which is about 40 to 60 FPS. This performance is practically on par with the M1 Max chip and the M1 original M1 chip. Now, a strong reason for this is probably because the game, for starters, hasn't been optimized for M1 and is running on OpenGL. So there's that. Black Ops 3 is a great game, but it's very annoying for a number of reasons on macOS. For starters, the application takes plus five minutes to vertify when you initially install it. It also doesn't appear to have a functioning multiplayer mode anymore. I mean, there was no cross-play with Windows, but now you just can't connect online. I guess it doesn't even really matter because hardly any Mac gamers actually play the game, but this just means you can't play multiplayer against bots or by inviting other players into private games, whether that be zombies or multiplayer. But who knows, maybe multiplayer is working for you, it's not on my end, or maybe Aspire will fix multiplayer in a future patch, but I doubt it. So for this presentation, I'm showing 1080p high. We are getting 40 to 60 FPS. You could also choose 1080p medium for plus 60 FPS. Now this is the only Call of Duty on Mac nowadays, uh, but thankfully it does support the metal framework, so it is doing okay. Our last game to test is Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which is one of, if not the most demanding game for Mac, still to this day. So how is it doing on M1 Pro? It's doing okay. At 1080p high, it is getting 51.8 FPS. At 1080p medium, it is getting 57 FPS. And I also tried 1440p medium and it gets 37.5 FPS. It's also worth noting if you get this game, it takes forever forever, forever to uh, load up to the main menu. I'm talking like, well, for me, five, five, over five minutes. It's ridiculous. That was the case on Intel Max as well. So uh, just, you're gonna have to live with that, I'm afraid. So what do you think of the performance of the M1 Pro chip? For me, it's it, it, it gets the job done, but as per usual with any Mac out there, you're going to have the issue of limited compatibility with AAA games and many Windows games are not currently working under Parallels and Crossover, but each week more games are, are starting to work under that software and that is really exciting. But at the end of the day, uh, I wouldn't go out and get this for gaming, 
but if you have it and you want to play it on the side, definitely go for it. And that has always been the case since uh, Apple transitioned from PowerPC because PowerPC is the golden era of, of Mac gaming, am I right? Anyways, I really apologize that this video took so long to come out. I was meant to post it like early in the week. It's just the tools I use to measure the frame rate take so, so long to, to analyze what's going on in a game. Leave a like if you found this video useful and subscribe and turn on notifications to stay up to date with everything Apple M1 Gaming related. I'm thinking that maybe next week I might do a video on games with 120 FPS support on M1 Pro and M1 Max. So let me know if that's something that you're interested in and also let me know of what else you want from me. Okay, anyway, my name's Stewie and thanks for watching.